I don't know how many more kills I need in order to get the challenge done for this, but I haven't played the past couple days. Oh, wait, I got zapped and it killed. Exclusive Ace made a video a few days ago, actually, talking about the prestige system in Black Ops 6. And we keep talking about uh, it being the classic prestige system, but this prestige system is technically slightly different overall than the classic prestige system, mostly because of the modern design of uh, Call of Duty. Before we didn't have all these battle passes and all these different paid things. I mean, at most, the things that I can remember was paying for like those $5 or $3 uh, camos over on Black Ops 2, back when we were still prestiging. I'm gonna try my best to prestige as much as I possibly can, but it is a worry as I'm prestiging that somehow it's gonna end up slowing down my overall progression for all of my grinding. So basically, I'm not going to prestige if it's gonna get in the way, but I'm gonna prestige at first, for sure. So before, it was like super simple whenever you were prestiging. You know, you just grind the game out, you wouldn't even have that many different like challenges out there that were like really complex in comparison to how we have it in the more modern games. There were still challenges and stuff out there that weren't required for a lot of the camo challenges. A lot of it was as simple as you either get headshots or regular kills, and it stopped right there. You'd level up from 1 to 55, and then you would do that 10 times and then if the game had a master prestige uh you would be able to hit max prestige 10th prestige and then you would be able to go past 55 now that sounds like the exact same thing that we're supposed to be getting for this black ops 6 they're saying that you know the classic prestige is back you'll be able to now hit you know level 55 10 times and then you end up getting to the master prestige rank the thing is the way that the game is set up now monetarily we have more things that we could basically be locked out of in comparison to what we did before we basically have more things now though that we end up losing whenever we prestige because there are many more things that we can buy now in comparison to when we used to be able to buy things. So, it is the classic prestige system, but there is a small asterisk here. It's even going as far as for some people to go and call it pay to win, but I don't necessarily agree that it's completely pay to win. The word winning is kind of you can interpret that in a different way. Winning in terms of what? Winning in terms of uh, getting better weapons, winning in terms of completing challenges quicker and getting your camo grind done faster, winning as in getting the overpowered weapon or just any weapon before you're supposed to unlock it. So Exclusive Ace pointed out that basically Activision had to make a choice here. Whenever they added this classic prestige system back into the game, which I think this is part of the reason why they didn't put it in the game before, it's just part of the reason, not the whole reason, we've talked about this stuff for years, but part of the reason is the fact that whenever you go in prestige, the idea is that it's supposed to lock everything all over again. Everything is supposed to be relocked, and you're supposed to grind back through it. That was the point of the entire grind. And then whenever you saw somebody do it 10 times, you're like, damn, that guy is grinding. The thing is, this is a classic prestige system. But it's still within the modern model that we have now. So all of the items, all the stores, all that stuff is still all there. Now what's going to happen is, though, whenever you go in prestige and say somebody went and bought a bundle, from what we understand, if you were to go and buy a weapon or a bundle that has a certain weapon in it, and say that that weapon is is unlocked at level 55. If you buy a bundle with that weapon, that weapon is now perma unlocked. And I didn't want to have to wait until level 55 to start working on the camo challenges because I don't have to level the weapon up. I just need access to the weapon. I could just simply buy a bundle with those late game uh, weapons and items in there to permanently unlock them, even if I prestige. So in a sense, that undermines the entire reason for prestiging in the first place because you're not actually losing uh, a lot of the items or you could just make it so you can permanently unlock them just by paying for it. Plus, taking a lot of the challenge out now given it's only part of the challenge i wouldn't go as far to say that it's pay to win but i think that the players that go and buy the bundles will absolutely be at more of an advantage than people that cannot go and buy those bundles or do not and by advantage i mostly mean just the overall camel grind we don't usually have situations in this game where people are complaining about oh man this guy has this blueprint at no point when i played this game or see in comment sections where people sit there and complain about somebody going and buying a specific bundle for a weapon i've never seen somebody die to a certain weapon from a bundle and go, ah, of course he bought that bundle. At no point did I ever see that. At most, I saw maybe like people, what the fuck? I saw people talk about the pay to win aspects for like, if a certain outfit is more difficult to see in the dark or something like that. But in terms of buying a bundle and then just getting a blueprint here, I've never heard anybody complain about people being able to get access to a blueprint before other people and then say that it's unfair. Maybe like a day one thing or something like that is like the most of the complaints that I've ever heard. But basically though, again, if you go and buy a bundle, you will be able to unlock those weapons permanently. Think of it like this. I know that a lot of people are thinking like, ah, typical Activision. I shit on them all the time. You guys already know. If you think of it from Activision's perspective of what they should do in this scenario, obviously they're going to keep their store up, right? And obviously they're trying their best to appease people with the uh, classic prestige system. We're finally going to be rid of this annoying, boring, shallow, almost meaningless leveling system that we have in the game at the moment that we've had for the past, I don't know, four years or so. Imagine you were somebody that bought a bundle and then you go and prestige 
and then you lose access to a bundle that you paid for. I feel like Activision doesn't want to go and deal with the possibility of people getting really angry and upset that their blueprint or the weapon of the blueprint is completely locked because they decided to prestige. So I think that this is where they decided, okay, this makes the most sense monetarily for us. Ethical, I, I wouldn't say is the right word. It's Activision, you know what I mean? But even if the player is the one that's technically locking them, I just, I can totally see a situation where typical dads, they go and buy something and then they finally end up prestige after some point in time and then they don't have enough time to go and level up and prestige again and then they can't get access to some of their favorite weapons or whatever it was that they ended up buying so then they just straight up quit the game altogether and then complain that activision is like locking their items i don't know you, you could just see how people can spin it you know what i mean so i think that on top of the fact that it would just incentivize people to buy more bundles it is in a way understandable why they're doing it this way so in the same vein that people will call this pay to win i think that it absolutely is like more pay for convenience as opposed to win then you would have to define what win even means in Call of Duty. Because winning doesn't fucking matter. I, I see people in the comments all the time. They'll quote me, I'm stamping it and everything, and be like, what do you mean winning doesn't matter? I I'm sorry to break it to you, man. It just does. The game doesn't matter because the next game is going to come out the next year. The systems and decisions and stuff that were made on those games also don't matter because we've seen time and time again, it is demonstrably true that a lot do not carry over. We miss out on things every single year. Every single time that we have something good, they just forget about it. It's like the dev teams don't even fucking talk to each other. Like, it's a big possibility that with this prestige system that comes out, even if everybody uses it this time around with Master Prestige and all that shit, gets great feedback overall, there is still no guarantee that it's going to be in the next Call of Duty after this one. That's just what Call of Duty does. Definitely more dependent on uh, who the devs are for the game for that year. But yeah, let me know what you guys think about that overall. Uh, it is a classic prestige system, but it does have a little bit of an asterisk in there. And this is technically kind of older-ish information or whatever, but the game is coming out soon. And yeah, for sure, if it benefits me in the camo grind overall, which I think could, at the same time, I'm still going to have to experience it myself and see, you know, how long I'll be locked out of a weapon, how many different weapons, how long it takes to do each weapon. Can I just go and, uh, you know, do a different weapon in a different class or category or whatever instead of worrying about needing to go and buy a bundle to be able to just get to it faster? Again, defining what uh, pay to win even actually means. To me, more of a pay to win thing would be you would be able to go and pay for a bundle or something that ends up actually giving you an advantage in terms of the actual gameplay itself. Not in terms of the efficiency in which you can grind at, otherwise Otherwise, that would mean that double XP tokens are pay to win and shit like that, and that's not the case. Basically, would you guys consider this pay to win? Personally, overall, I, I don't actually think that it's, uh, quote, pay to win. I do think that it's pay for convenience, though. Pay for efficiency. Here's another thing, though. That would mean anything and everything that comes with the battle pass as well. This includes new weapons, at least in terms of their, you know, current design. A lot of people would technically have a lot of things perma unlocked. To me, I think the good middle ground here is to have the bundle themselves, like the blueprint itself, perma unlocked, but not the entire weapon. Weapon. But from what I understand, the full weapon along with the bundle is perma. Of course, you can get the perma unlock tokens by prestiging yourself. But again, this is a result of the way that they have monetized the game now. Don't get me wrong. I don't necessarily like this. I'm just explaining that I don't really think that it's overall like pay to win. It's Call of Duty. There's not really a pay to win scenario unless like a weapon actually does more damage. Like some advanced warfare shit. Now that's pay to win. This is coming from the guy that has opened hundreds of uh, supply drop map sizes and stuff. I I've seen some people complain about it. But again, I, I have my opinion on larger maps. They can obviously just add a larger map into the game later if they want but again i'm not gonna vote for that map that's just how it is i'm not gonna vote for it and honestly i think a lot of the medium maps could still give a feeling of being a larger map whenever you go and compare them all like in a vacuum relative to each other there is still going to be small medium and large they classify them as small and medium in relation to the larger maps that they've made before but if we have medium maps and some of the mediums being bigger mediums than these smaller mediums but not necessarily classified as small maps, you can still think of a map as larger than other maps. They can name it whatever they want in the category, but again, relative to each other, there is still going to be larger maps. Anyway, yeah, that's my thoughts on that whole thing. I'm happy the classic prestige system is back. It's not something that was absolutely needed for me or anything like that, but now I'll be able to value a lot of the levels and ranks now. Nowadays, I look at it and I see somebody that's, you know, level 1200 or whatever, and then they just get absolutely stomped. And that can still be the case whenever somebody is prestiging or whatever, but something about prestiging just felt a lot more, well, prestigious as opposed to just blindly leveling into the void on this game over the past i don't know how many years at this point yeah let me know what your thoughts are and uh yeah it's been dev guys later